I feel really sorry for this woman. She's completely distraught. She's an emotional wreck. And, you know, when I first saw the clip, was first starting to watch the clip, I I started to kind of laugh. And then I thought, wait a minute, this this person is this person is really, really in pain. And I'm sure there's a number of people who have poked fun at her. Oh, ha ha, look at her. Isn't that pathetic? Well, it is pathetic, but it's it's sad. President Trump, if you see this, please save us. I don't even see our American flag anymore. Biden's talking with some kind of crazy flag. I tried looking into this further to see what flags she's talking about, and all I could find was this. This is America. This is our land. Please, President Trump. Please, please, I hope you have a plan. God, please save us. Save us from the devil, please. Y'all are about to have a panic attack. <laughs> this is our country. Our country. This is awful. God, please save us, please. This is what can happen to people who are uneducated and ignorant who buy into just about anything that alternative media says, who claim that anything that mainstream media says is fake news. Okay, this is what can happen. It's like, look out, it's a Chinese communist takeover. I mean, these people are literally scared that we're going to turn into a communist country. It reminds me of how I was and how many people on the left were when Trump got elected. Now, granted, there are a number of people on the left who thought that, oh no, the United States is going to become a fascist country under Trump. And I was never really that worried about that. But I was concerned about what Trump would do to discourse in this country. What would happen to our culture and our civilization if we stopped caring, if we stopped being nice to people, if we just said whatever's on our mind, whether it's hurtful or not. And we can see the result of this. You know, I'd say 15% of the population latched onto it. You know, it's an unempathetic, xenophobic ideology. You know, a mindset of fuck your feelings. There's no such thing as punching down. There's no such thing as hate speech. Nothing I say can make you feel anything. Some even get to the point of, uh, oh, there's no such thing as cruelty unless it's physical cruelty. You know, and it comes with the notion that anything that mainstream media says is fake news, and anything that alternative media says, if it's clashing with mainstream media, oh, it must be true. And the sad thing is, Republican politicians are fine with people being this way. They want people to be ignorant and uneducated because it makes them easier to control. It also means that those people who are in that kind of mindset won't try to ask more from the government. Those politicians can collect a huge check without having to do anything. They don't have to fight for the people. They don't have to fight for the middle or lower class. They don't have to fight for the working class. They can just get their big checks, say some patriotic phrases, and, uh, and they're good. It's like, so what if we're taking away your rights and your options? Look, you have tax cuts. And you might say, well, not all the right wing is this way. Well, no. And not even all Republicans are this way. But, uh, I mean, but if you think about, let's say, libertarians, they don't want the populace to be uneducated, but they're rather apathetic towards whether they are educated. You know, they take the attitude of, well, if people are educated, cool, and if they're not educated, well, that's cool, too. You know, it's more out of apathy than control. You know, apathy and the principle of, oh, small government. Now, I mean, Democrats want people to be educated, but a very particular way. 
So Democratic politicians can say all the buzzwords and people believe it, and they don't even have to keep their promises. But, you know, Republican politicians, as I said, would prefer if the populace was ignorant and uneducated. You know, because, as I said, ignorant and uneducated people are easier to control, especially by using people's superstitions. And as it can be seen with this woman, people who believe in some things without evidence, like, you know, Abrahamic religious beliefs, it's far easier for those people to believe in a number of other things without evidence. So at that point, it's much easier to use people's xenophobia to make them scared, to make them support awful things. Now, we obviously know the flip side to this sort of thing, where the people who are so educated in the fear-mongering of, you know, oh, let's see the patriarchy everywhere, let's see racism everywhere, let's see, you know, heteronormativity everywhere, and, you know, to see constant injustices everywhere, even in just regular everyday interactions, you know, so that can make people scared as well, and people can try to use that fear to try to control people and to try to implement things that are oppressive because, oh no, look, this is going to happen, right? Y'all, I cried so much. I can't even believe this is real. Like, this world, this isn't what's going to happen to our country. This is sad. And I thought that something was going to happen today, but it didn't. And everybody's on here keeps saying, oh, something's going to happen. Y'all, y'all been saying this forever, and I was believing it forever. And I'm tired of getting my hopes up on here, seeing people make these videos and all these people thinking they know stuff and don't. I believe it when I see it. Hearing her say that makes me happy that she's learned something out of this. She's not going to just listen to people without there being any sort of evidence. She's not going to just listen and believe. But right now, the only person that can do anything is God. I'm not going to live like this. It's not right. This is America, freedom of speech, and they're taking that away from us. And this is the danger of when people try to claim that being censored on the internet is losing your First Amendment rights. Okay, this is the danger. Now, I've been guilty myself of using the phrases free speech or freedom of speech to talk about the subject of people being censored on big tech platforms, and I shouldn't, because it can be so easily interpreted as if I'm talking about the First Amendment or people's actual legal rights, and, and that's not the case. You know, you're, you're not losing any rights when you get censored on big tech platforms. Now, in places like the UK, where they never really truly had, you know, something like, you know, the equivalent of the First Amendment, yeah, in the UK, people can uh, have legal things brought against them. They can see jail time. They can get arrested for saying mean things on the Internet, and, and that's unfortunate. But here in the United States... We're not really at risk of that. And people go say, oh, a slippery slope. No, no, not really. You know, there, I, I don't think we're going to have the erosion of the First Amendment. You know, people might try, but uh, it would be quite a fight to uh, restrict that. Anyway, I don't know what more to say. Thanks for watching.